Imagine a musician who can make jazz whisper, hip hop roar, and silence speak. A pianist whose fingers dance between genres like a musical chameleon, defying every expectation and rule. This is Robert Glasper, but who is he really? And what mysterious creative transformation happens inside his mind? Born in Houston, Texas, Glasper wasn't the child prodigy you might expect. He didn't emerge from the womb playing Coltrane or Mozart. In fact, he started playing piano at the surprisingly late age of 11, beginning with a single-fingered rendition of Happy Birthday. A humble start for someone who would eventually revolutionize modern music. What transforms an ordinary musician into a genre-bending innovator? How does someone go from playing simple tunes to collaborating with legends like Kendrick Lamar and winning multiple Grammy Awards? The answer lies in Glasper's extraordinary ability to hear music not as separate genres, but as a fluid, interconnected language. His musical journey is a riddle wrapped in a melody, a story of breaking rules, challenging traditions, and creating something entirely new. And at the center of it all is a mind that refuses to be confined by musical boundaries. Imagine a young boy sitting at a piano, plinking out happy birthday with one finger. Little did he know that this simple tune would be the first step on a journey that would revolutionize the world of jazz and blur the lines between genres. This is the story of Robert Glasper, a musical mastermind who would go on to win multiple Grammy Awards, an Emmy, and even a Peabody. But how did he get there? What twists and turns did his path take? And what secrets lie behind his incredible ability to fuse jazz with hip hop, R&B, and everything in between? Robert Andre Glasper was born on April 6, 1978. From the very beginning, music was in his blood. His mother, Kim Yvette Glasper, was a professional jazz and blues singer, and she became Robert's earliest and most significant musical influence. Instead of leaving young Robert with babysitters, Kim would take him along to her club dates, immersing him in the world of live music from an early age. His mother was also the music director at the East Wind Baptist Church where Robert first performed in public. This unique upbringing exposed him to a rich tapestry of musical styles, from the soulful melodies of gospel to the improvisational nature of jazz and the raw emotion of blues. Interestingly, Robert's musical journey didn't start with the piano. At around five or six years old, he began playing the drums. This early rhythmic foundation would later prove invaluable in his genre-bending compositions. However, sports soon caught his attention and music took a backseat for a few years. It wasn't until the age of 11 that Robert Glasper truly sat down at a piano and began to learn how to play. Starting with Happy Birthday using just one finger, he quickly discovered a passion that would shape the rest of his life. As he recalls, once I started, then I just took off from there, like I couldn't get enough of the piano. While other kids in his neighborhood were out playing basketball, young Robert was inside, fingers dancing across the keys, lost in the world of music. This dedication was so intense that he barely knew the other children in his area. But what was driving this newfound obsession? What music was fueling his passion? As a middle schooler, Glasper was already diving deep into the world of jazz. He listened intently to the works of jazz piano giants like Chick Corea, Oscar Peterson, and Keith Jarrett. These legendary musicians laid the foundation for Glasper's jazz sensibilities. But his musical palette was far from limited. Glasper's talent continued to flourish during his high school years. He attended Elkins High School in Missouri City, Texas, before transferring to the prestigious high school for the performing and visual arts in Houston. It was here that his skills truly began to shine. By 10th grade, he was already performing with the jazz band at Texas Southern University, a remarkable achievement for someone so young. In 1997, Glasper participated in the Second Vale Jazz Workshop, an experience that would further hone his skills and expose him to other young jazz talents. After high school, he made the bold decision to move to New York City, enrolling in the New School for Jazz and Contemporary Music. New York City opened up a world of possibilities for Glasper. It was at the New School that he met neo-soul singer Bilal, a connection that would prove pivotal in his career. The two began performing and recording together, leading Glasper to collaborate with a variety of hip-hop and R&B artists. This period marked the beginning of Glasper's journey in bridging the gap between jazz and other genres. While still a student, Glasper's exceptional talent caught the attention of established jazz greats. He began touring as a sideman with renowned artists such as bassist Christian McBride and trumpeters Terence Blanchard and Roy Hargrove. These experiences not only sharpened his skills, but also exposed him to the professional world of jazz at the highest level. 
As Glasper's jazz career was taking off, he was simultaneously being drawn into the world of hip-hop and neo-soul. His friendship with Bilal led to connections with era-defining artists like Jill Scott, The Roots, and Jay Dilla. This immersion in the hip-hop scene would prove instrumental in shaping Glasper's unique musical voice. In 2002, Glasper released his debut album, Mood. The album featured a mix of original compositions and jazz standards, showcasing Glasper's growing skills as both a performer and a composer. This release caught the attention of the legendary Blue Note Records, and in 2005, Glasper released his Blue Note debut, Canvas. Glasper's Blue Note year saw him refining his sound and pushing the boundaries of jazz. His 2007 album, In My Element, included tributes to his mother and hip-hop producer Jay Dilla, as well as innovative covers that blended jazz standards with contemporary songs. This album hinted at the genre-defying direction Glasper's music would take in the coming years. In 2012, Glasper released Black Radio, an album that would change the course of his career and leave an indelible mark on the music industry. What made Black Radio truly special was its innovative approach. The album was recorded live with no overdubs, creating a raw and authentic sound that captured the energy of live performance. It seamlessly blended jazz with R&B, hip hop, and soul, creating a new paradigm for creative music that transcended traditional genre boundaries. The album was both a critical and commercial success. It debuted at number 10 on Billboard's Top Current Albums chart and won the Grammy Award for Best R&B Album. Rolling Stone praised Glasper for getting hip-hop jazz right, a notoriously difficult fusion to achieve. Following the success of Black Radio, Glasper continued to push his musical boundaries. He released Black Radio 2 in 2013, which won a Grammy for Best Traditional R&B Performance. His influence began to extend beyond his own albums as he collaborated with some of the biggest names in music. One of Glasper's most notable collaborations came in 2015 when he played keyboards on Kendrick Lamar's critically acclaimed album, To Pimp a Butterfly. This album, which blended jazz, hip-hop, and spoken word, further solidified Glasper's reputation as a musician who could bridge different musical worlds. As Glasper's music career continued to soar, he began to explore new avenues for his creativity. In 2016, he served as producer, composer, and arranger for the film Miles Ahead, a biography about jazz legend Miles Davis. This project allowed Glasper to pay homage to one of his major musical influences, while also showcasing his skills in a new medium. Glasper's talents also found their way to television. He composed the song Letter to the Free with Common for Ava DuVernay's documentary, 13th. The song won an Emmy Award for Best Original Song in 2017 adding yet another prestigious accolade to Glasper's growing collection. In recent years, Glasper has continued to explore new musical territories and collaborations. In 2018, he announced another new project, August Green, a band consisting of himself, Common, and Kareem Riggins. Glasper's most recent album, Black Radio 3, released in 2022, continues his tradition of genre-blending excellence. The album features collaborations with a diverse array of artists, further cementing Glasper's reputation as a musical chameleon capable of adapting to and enhancing any style. As we look back on Robert Glasper's journey, from a young boy playing Happy Birthday with one finger to a multi-Grammy and Emmy award-winning artist, it's clear that his impact on the music world has been profound. He has not only pushed the boundaries of jazz, but has also helped to break down the walls between genres, creating a new, more inclusive musical landscape. Glasper's ability to seamlessly blend jazz, hip-hop, R&B, and soul has inspired a new generation of musicians to think beyond traditional genre constraints. His work has shown that music can be both intellectually stimulating and emotionally resonant, appealing to both jazz purists and hip-hop heads alike. Moreover, Glasper's success has opened doors for other jazz musicians to explore collaborations with artists from different genres. He has helped to bring jazz back into the mainstream conversation, making it relevant and exciting for a new generation of listeners. As Robert Glasper continues to create, innovate, and inspire, one can't help but wonder, what new musical frontiers will he explore next? How will his unique vision continue to shape the future of music? Whatever the answers may be, one thing is certain. The musical world is eagerly waiting to hear what Robert Glasper does next. This is Aaron from One Track Jazz. Thanks for listening and don't forget to like and subscribe.